Hello, how are you? I'm not going to be pretending to be surprised all the time anymore because you know I put my camera into a cabinet and like pull out ingredients and stuff. But have you noticed that every time I pull out ingredients, the ingredients are different. I actually try and have ingredients in there for the segment that I'm actually going to post and publish. So I don't know if you can guess what I'm going to do today. In any case, thought of the day, one of those little nuggets again that I found on the internet and I've been trying to do it this entire lockdown period. Oh wait, let me take out this orange. So, make a bed every morning. But it dawned on me when I made my bed this morning that making a bed every morning is a lot like life. Some days when you fluff out, fluff out that duvet, it lands exactly like you want it to. You don't need to straighten it out. It's, it's, it's a great feeling for me anyway. <laughs> hey, I take my joys as I get them. Yeah, so you fluff out that duvet, it flies, it flies in the air, and almost in slow motion, it lands on the bed and it's perfectly made. On some days though, the sheets just won't get to where you want them to go and you struggle with it. A bit of an analogy for life really, and hey, that's okay. Everyone goes through tough days, everyone goes through good days, but I think the most important thing is to be grateful for all of them. To be grateful for the good days when you have good days and to be able to enjoy them and feel that feeling of lightness. But if you have bad days, at the end of the day, take a few deep breaths, realize that the sun comes out tomorrow and that there were lessons to be learned. Once I've done that, I feel a lot better and I feel that, hey, my day wasn't so wasted after all. But today, we are going to do something which is really exciting for me. I've made this all this time for many, many years. We actually do it for our kitchen in the cafe at Just Heavenly. And we're going to do a high roast chicken. A few techniques to think about on this one. You need to be able to dry the chicken. You need to be able to stuff the butter under the chicken. And after all these years, I've actually found a way to do it quite easily without melting the butter as it's in your hand and you're trying to stuff it under the skin. And yes, that's the next point. You want to stuff the butter under the skin so that the butter just sucks into that meat and you get a great juicy chicken at the end of it. One more little tip, dry brining. Two words, keep that in mind and watch the video. Well, here I am writing out the recipe as usual. I like to do this because it really focuses me. Click that little arrow to go to the description below and you will see the recipe. Here I'm dry brining the chicken. Basically, I'm rubbing salt into it, into the cavity and leaving it for at least four hours to overnight just so that the salt will suck into that meat and give you a flavorful, juicy, moist meat at the end of it. If anyone wants to look up that process, it's called osmosis. In any case, here is our chicken, dry brined. I'm showing you the backbone because that's what I'm going to be cutting out to be able to spread batch cock this chicken. Basically, we're going to remove the backbone so that it'll be easier to butterfly this chicken. All you need for this is really a sturdy pair of kitchen shears. You can use a chopper or a knife if you'd like, but I've found over the years that this is really the easiest way. Cut down over across on the side of the backbone through the ribs and snap it apart. Now you can cut 
the backbone out entirely, but I've found that you don't really need to. It's just that one half of the chicken will be slightly larger than the other. Just ease the breastbone apart. You should hear a click and then use the palm of your hand and press it down so that it lies flat. At this point, you want to cut off any extra bits. Don't throw this away. You can throw this into soup or stocks and you won't waste a thing. That's of course the bishop's nose that is going. That's entirely up to you. Here's where it gets really fun. Now just use your index and middle finger and try and loosen, pry the skin off the meat so that you will have pockets in which you can stuff your compound butter. All you want to do is to make space like I'm doing here by running your finger through under the skin. Don't tear the skin. You don't want the skin torn so that the butter won't leak out as much as possible when you put the butter paste in. I'm giving you a recipe for one type of compound butter. Over here you see me cutting off the woody ends of the garlic, stuffing it into a press and just squeezing the heck out of it so that the garlic comes out anyway. You don't even need to peel it. But having said that, any compound butter will work and it can be the Baskin Robbins of chicken for this roast. Quickly just subdivide the butter into two bits at least so that each half of the chicken will have almost the same amount of butter. Take a dinner spoon like this, stuff it under the skin with a spoonful of butter and then just squish it around so that the butter spreads all over the meat under the skin. It's really quite important that the butter is spread evenly so when you roast it just melts into the meat. I don't like flabby skin on my chicken. So what I'm doing here is I'm toweling the dear old bird down. And this will give you a nice crispy skin. Optionally, you could put it in the fridge and leave it overnight to dry out. That will give you this glass-like finish. I absolutely love this recipe. Why? Because it gives me a whole meal in one roasting tray. What I'm doing here is pretty much prepping the vegetables to be the roasting rack for your chicken. And at the end, you'll have beautifully flavored buttered vegetables to enjoy. You could use potatoes, carrots, parsnips, even white radishes if you'd like. And I've got a roasting onion there, which you can actually refer to in my previous YouTube video. So here I am making the roasting rack for the chicken. There is a method to this madness of why we've butterflied the chicken. You want to set it up on the vegetable roasting rack like I'm showing you. The drumsticks need to be crossed over the breastbone so that there's just slightly higher than the breast meat and therefore they will cook just that much faster. The reason for having the drumstick and the thigh on top like this is so that they cook faster than the breast meat so the breast meat doesn't dry out. Make sure your oven is at full whack. In this case, mine's at 250 degrees Celsius and it will only take 45 minutes to get this. I found that the best way to butcher the chicken is to take the thighs off first and the drumsticks of course, then split the breast meat and the wings. Just look at that juicy breast meat. If I may say, the roast onions would be a great accompaniment. Just look it up on the channel. Thanks for watching, subscribe, like and share, and I'll see you again soon on Nigel's Joys.